Hello there, I am iCake, and today I am here to walk over how I do Dungeons and Dragon maps eh, in general. It's gonna be uncut, it's gonna be unedited, it's gonna be nice, simple, run through how I create maps for specific monsters. I've been playing D&D &D for several years now. And I'm not in any way an expert. Don't take my word as law. If anything, criticize me, please. I welcome it. But today, I've picked a monster, one of my personal favorites, to throw at any difficulty party, even though its challenge rating is only a three. Today's creature of choice, the Basilisk. Well, let's do a quick little run through. A basilisk is a cave dweller. So, as it says in the name, basilisk. Travelers sometimes find objects that look like pieces of remarkably lifelike stone carvings of wildlife. I like to assume people and travelers and merchants and horses and uh, other statues tend to arrive in the area, yes. Missing parts appear to have been bitten off, clawed off, scarred, scraped, chiseled into. Seasoned explorers regard such relics as warnings, knowing that the basilisk that created them is likely to be nearby. So, because this will be new, going into winter, let's do D and D. Let's do roll twenty default, just for the sake of things. We're doing a cave dungeon. That's fine. Reshaped everything. We'd we'll be good to go. Now. For this instance, let's say we're doing 25 by 25. Let's randomly say that it is a path. So it's going to be one of those path situations where you're going through basically a mountainside. It's going to be a tunnel shortcut that gives you through the mountain. And, well, and let's say a basilisk has moved in. So let's, let's start with a default cave floor. Let's pick a... Uh, Let's go for a little bit more wide than the standard. Let's, let's make it so that caravans and carts can go through. We start over here. Let's start over there. Ah, let's let's do a uh, a substandard. Going a little bit off to the side. It's not exactly a straight and narrow path. Things progress. It's going to be straight over yeah just straight just straight down that'll work that'll work so this is the path that your adventurers or caravans will normally take you can make this be an ambush situation you can make this be a search and rescue you can do a lot of things with this but where do we want to take it we have all of this open empty space we could do a little bit something over here maybe uh yes i've got an idea have a uh Maybe you can, as a roll 20, you can hide an entrance way. What will happen is, is that things will maybe, there's a crevice here. You can maybe squeeze through that normally you can't see. And it leads to a, uh, a smuggler's den. Yes, that would be a good idea. It leads to a little smuggler's hoity hole. Or maybe a switch, an invisible door, magic illusion. Many, 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 many ideas. But we can save this to be a smuggler's hole. Now, I'm not going to occupy that just yet. I'm going to remember that it's a little smuggler. You know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and fill in the smuggler hole. Again, this is going to be unedited, uncensored, and uh, why not just put it as I can. So, icons, icons, icons. Furniture? Hmm, do we, we want a chest? Yes, of course. Do we want any altars? We could make it a cultist hole. Put some barrels, wouldn't be a bad idea. Benches broken, chairs. Let's go for crates. Let's go for an older crate, yes. Let's see. You're going to shift. Let's do an alt X. Let's do a random rotation. Aha. Ah, yes, exactly what I wanted. And hit G, turn off the snap placement. Keep things. There. That looks pretty nice. Let's, let's continue, shall we? I would like to have maybe a basket. Let's look at a basket. Yes, there's a few baskets here. Maybe not exactly a basket. Maybe a barrel. 
maybe an open barrel. We could put some items into it and have a chest or two. Maybe under lock or magical mechanisms. Uh, we could have fish balls. We could have smashed barrels. We can have all sorts of barrels with mods. Let's see here. A good one needs to be top down. Preferably a sealed barrel. Ah. I like this one. It's a little bit large. I mean. Let's see. Shifting it down. There we go. Holding alt. You want to make it about the smaller? Yes, I guess so. Doesn't need to be a huge one. That's going to be a large box. Keep in mind, each one of these squares is a 5x5. Five five. So if you have a large box, you're saying that it's several feet wide. So this box will probably be larger than the size of a person. Yes. Be quite interesting. Put the barrel there. Uh, rotate it slightly. Put the barrel there as well. And why not? Put another barrel there. That you can make a trap. Ah, oh, yes. Two barrels. You can put a trap right here. I'll leave that to you. If you would like to look at this map, by the way, or you'd like to view it after the fact, please let me know in the comments below. Or however you would do it. Uh, we need a chest. Now, there's many chests. We can do bone chests. We can do a broken chest. Somebody's already stolen all of the goodies. We can do a fungus-infested chest. And just some beaten-down chest. Magical... Uh, puzzles that require certain items installed. Yes, here's the puzzle ones. Good, good puzzle ones. Had to find certain pieces together. This has a sigil on it, but for the sake of simplicity, let's go for a standard chest. Maybe this would be an eight-piece puzzle series. Maybe not. Demon chest. Ah, I like this one. This will work. It doesn't have to be too exorbitant. You could have one of these chests be empty. You could have it not. But edge of the room, there are two chests. Yes. It's a nice little hidey hole. Nobody really expects much to get in there. You can set a trap, several traps throughout this entire little corridor. But for simplicity, that should be fine. Unless we want a torch. Hmm. You could have inactive torch. Ah, no. Hmm, maybe. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Or better yet, a candle. Have an inactive candle on the box or in the barrel. That way, it comes near magically, it lights itself. Hmm, we would like as a candle holder. Oh, a skull candle holder. No, 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 no. We don't want that. Don't want anything radiating light immediately. Candlestick. I mean, yeah, that's just a blotch. Let's not do that. No. Ah, uh, let's go for the candle candle, yes. It's going to be a small little item, yes. There you go, small little candle to denote the way. It'll help game masters and players realize that if they light it, something may happen. It's, it helps to have physical representation. So, what else can we put in here? Hmm. Something that the player should be able to see. Ah, yes. We can put coinage in here. It's just a small little pile of coins to uh, entice anyone to come over quickly and investigate the barrels, which may be booby-trapped. If not, then it's just some free loot you can give someone. Or you can say it's fake money if you don't wish to give things out. You can give them, make them believe it's real. Or it's just an illusion. It's actually just copper pieces. Or better yet, cursed gold. Pirates of the Caribbean, for once. That'd be interesting. Now, I think that works pretty good. You want to keep it nice and simple. Now... Do we want to do the same hidey hole? Yes. Maybe that wouldn't be a bad idea. Let's use the cave floor again. The floor being well traveled, so we could keep it consistent. Hmm. We could. Yes, you could notice. Ah, yes, this would be cave floor. We can change the floor to something different can have a little patch here, denoting freshly carved out. You can change the color. No, 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 no. That doesn't look too right. 
Ah, uh, let's do edge, maybe. Maybe that would work. Floor two. Hmm. Just denoting, nah, 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 nah. Now that's not bad. Yes, you can always round out the edges should you choose to, or you can fill them back in. I like this little crevasse. You can give people a little peek if they are perceptive enough, a little peek through. But let's just continue. Let's have it be on a back corner, on a edge, kind of like this, that works. It's going to be a uh, single file route, and we're going to probably have two or three major rooms. Yes. I've got an accent out of nowhere, and I'm going to stick with it. We can keep things as close as we want to, because this is going to be a wall. So they shouldn't be able to see through it unless they have x-ray. But x-ray would only let you go through a maximum of three feet for stone, I believe, or five. I believe wood is five feet. So even if they have a ring of x-ray, you should be okay, unless they're trying to go through that. My party at the moment has one, hence I'm thinking about it. Yes, that wouldn't be a bad idea at all. Split it into uh, two directions. Give it a little bit of a corridor. Have a creature spawn out. Maybe, perhaps, in a den of sorts. Misshapen. Give it a nice little corner to ambush around. Yes. But this could be the creature's den. Or we can go over this way. And mayhaps spawn another larger corridor. Hmm. Yes, it's a nice large room. Want to fill in a couple of these. Give it uh, the illusion of misshapenness. Give another little corner. They can uh, have, like, you don't want to underestimate corners, especially when you're creating your own maps. Line of sight, if you're choosing to use it, uh, if you have the premium on World 20 to use it, this will comes in handy. If you don't use it, then create your own. You like, literally drag a line from the center to wherever you want to see. So just drag lines to corners and stuff like that. Just do it all the time. Make them paranoid. Uh, making your players paranoid is probably one of the funnest things to do as a game master. So, this is a decent little room, but I don't know. That doesn't really feel basilisk enough for me. So, let's have it branch again. Go this way, that way, coming up, one more, and have it a double entrance. Ah, yes. Make it more elaborate than you normally see them. You see this, they only see this. Gives you the ability to... Surprise. Remember, they don't know anything is anywhere. So, take advantage of it. Make them check around every corner. There's a single file. So, if you're having to shoot through your allies, if they roll a 1, use that friendly fire. But let's go ahead. I like this being the main basilisk room. This could be a rat lair. Could just be a fungal infestation area. Oh, I like that. I like that idea a lot. So we'll use that. We'll use that. As for down here, a dead end, most likely. Or you could have another creature spawn. It would be a lair of some sort. Ooh, we could add skeletons and remains. Let's do that. This will be the feasting place, and this will be its nest. This will be a fungal trove. They'll be able to see into it immediately, and they'll know that there's something in there, so they'll be more likely to venture forth into the area. They go up, they'll venture forth, and they'll go to the nest. If they go to the nest first, then they'll, they, you can make them find it there, or you can make it in the feeding area, feasting, or trying to corner its latest prey as you hear screaming into the distance as the merchant you were sent to find does not come back. You hear the screaming, you hear the terrible wailing as somebody's getting limbs and slowly petrifying up. Speaking of petrification, the Basculus has this gaze of stone. They're ponderous for hunting creatures. They needn't need. They needn't chase the prey. 
Meeting a basilisk supernatural gave can be enough to effect rapid transformation, transforming a victim into porous stone. Basilisks with their strong jaws are able to consume the stone. The stone returns to organic form and the stone basilisk gullet. Imagine if it didn't. That would be a hard to digest. Some alchemists are said to know how to process the gullet and the fluids contained within. Property handled, the gullet produces an oil that can return petrified creatures to flesh to life. That would be something as well. You can make that an objective for you. Revivification using the oil is impossible if a vital part, a vital part of the petrified creature, such as the head, is detached. So, it dies. Or the heart. Yes. So, keep things simple. Let's go ahead and do the eating place. Yes, eating place. The feasting ground. We're going with that. Don't question it. So, maybe some bones? No, 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 no. Now, bodies? Body? Yes, we could have... Not tortured bodies. You could... Ah, you could have the ruined adventurers. I'm not going to put those. I'm going to put statue. Yes, here's one. You can use the statue. It looks like it's a monk potentially trying to punch one of their adversaries. Not a lot of options here, so you may be able to just fill in things as you can. There's just not too much with it. I may reuse this. A basculus does have a pretty strong tail. You could state the basculus or this one has a particular habit of dragging its newly captured prey from around here. It watches and grows. Until somebody comes around the corner and it makes the noise. They turn, get petrified before they can run. Because they meet the gaze, it's already too late. And then they would go and slowly drag their prey for storage. Potentially to eat later. Yes, I like that. I like that. Rotate automatically. Hmm... Yes, it's turned on. Have quite a few stone apparitions through here. Most of them missing pieces and bodies. This basilisk apparently does not feel the need to finish its prey. After a few days, it has decided to not bother. But it does know how to keep its pen clean, however. So, we will say, maybe a pile of stones, maybe? Random stones, ah. Uh, hmm. Yes. Just add random stone piles. Moderately sized. Just randomly placed in a little pile over here. Yes, good. That actually looks really good. Now. That will be the ungotten remains. Now, let's go ahead and add a few. Let's see. Will there better color stone groupings for this? Yes, that does look better. You can have remain pieces flopped around on all over it. Yes. You can see which ones have been eaten and which ones have not. We'll keep these four mostly intact. You could say that they were chopped off cleanly. You could say that they weren't. But we'll be keeping those. Unfortunately, there's no other animal statues. You can add your own plethora of statues as needed. It's not that difficult. It shouldn't be that difficult. I'd hope it would. Mm, imagination runs wild. Yes, again, keeping it. As we can. So, let's go ahead, instead of going immediately into the nest, let's talk about the how they are. They are adaptable predators. They thrive in air temperature and tropical climates. They lair in caves and other sheltered sites. Most often, basilisks are encountered underground, hence the encounter. A basilisk born and raised in captivity can be domesticated and trained. Such a trained basilisk knows how to avoid meeting the eyes of those its master wishes to protect from its graves. But it does, it makes a daunting guardian beast. Because of this use, basilisk eggs are highly prized. You can make that also be 
one of the objectives. Speaking of which, let's say nest. Let's just do large. Just general nesting items. Uh, let's hit the button there. So, nest large. You can say for this nest, instead of being made with cloth or being made with strands of organic material, it is made with limbs and it's made with petrified, elongated pieces, like a shaved piece that it's painstakingly carved with its claw. Its intelligence is only a two, so maybe not. But you can describe this as you wish. Uh, random rotation, random rotation. Uh, good. I like that. So, the nest is down. What else should we put in the... No, 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 no. Not that. Delete that. Wrong button. What else do we put in the nest? Uh, more statues. Uh, stones. Statue of Ulta. No. That's too much. Hmm. Dragon statue. Barbarian statues. Child with dog. Oh, that's a way to get people going. Plith queen statues. Osiris, statue, ah, statues broken. That would have worked a lot better over here, but you can say that this is a different area than this. You can have this be a Goliath, so to say. A Goliath who got to the place and, uh, like, so you can have a jump scare right here. The Goliath got here, got to the nest. Another adventuring party. And failed. Yes. Maybe use another one. Statue broken. Ah, there's only statue broken. That's unfortunate. There's a panther. Hmm. That would work. That would work indeed. Have a animal kind of scare you. How about this? We need to change it, so that way it's facing diagonally. They come around the corner, and in front of their faces, they see a panther ready to pounce. As they get ready to cast their magical spells, they realize it doesn't move, it doesn't answer. Yes, I like that. That's pretty good. So, we shall continue. I don't know why I have this accent. I guess I'm just nervous. I'm do keeping this in, because why would I not? But, what else do we want for the nest? I would like stones, maybe... No, 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 not bones. Maybe it would regurgitate. Something didn't enjoy its stomach. So, puddle. No, 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 no. Blood. Yes, because it can and will attack. And so, let's have a... Yes... A bloody trail. Oh, no. I hit the button again. Not bloody. Blood. Well, that was part of it. Uh, bloody trail. Um, shrink it down. Have them realize that there's something over here. You notice on the ground is blood. You can use rust for the weapons. I mean, you can have uh, rust eaters, rust monsters in here as well. You can have that be in one of the rooms here. I will fill this out with fungus for sure. Like a little bit of a naturally cultivated room. Basilisks are carnivores. Yes. Keep in mind that if a creature is not surprised, it can avert its gaze to not be petrified. So you want to take full advantage. There could be a nest, like multiple, again, nest. You could have multiple basilisks. This is where I would like to do... A basilisk is a tanky little boy. It's got 52 default HP. Or 8d8 plus 16. Again, modifiers you need to. You could make it an elder basilisk and double that HP. And give it a 
appropriate stat boost. Increase its strength probably from 16 to 18 dexterity. Bump that up a little bit. And again, keep that in mind. That will increase its armor class as well from 15 to 16 if you bump up the dexterity. Constitution could go up a little bit, giving it a little bit more health. Don't worry about the intelligence unless you plan on doing something kind of like a Mastiff. Like the uh, Shadow Mastiff Alpha. You can have a Basilisk Alpha. That would be... Interesting as well. Give it a unique ability to, uh, it does a deafening roar, which gets everybody do a fear check, exactly like, much like the uh, Alpha Mastiff. But this one instead does a roar, and it, you can make it do a fear check, or you can make it do a, everybody has to do a wisdom save, or the war stare as this thing roars you down. So it's got like a forced aggro kind of thing. It's not a bad idea. I may, I will definitely be using this in my campaign, but I thought I'd share it around. Hopefully none of my players see this. Oh, God. Well, they're professional, quote-unquote, enough to not care, I hope. But, let's see here. So, nice little surprise there. I think I want, in the middle of the room, like a little pillar right here. Like, make it... Yes, I like that. Uh, edge, fill that out. Yeah, I like that. Make it so that they can't go through there. Make give it a give it another good corner for a basilisk to come around. Because again, surprise, surprise, surprise is how you make the difficulty higher. They because as long as they're surprised, they have to do that ridiculous Constitution saving throw. Which again. It's only 12, so it's early game. But again, you can change it as you need to. Again, that Alpha or Elder or Ancient Basilisk, which you can make basically a 2x2 two two creature. You can make that thing large if you really wanted to. These things normally being medium monstrosities. You can do what you want to with it. Make the DC save higher. Annoy your compatriots. If they know that they're coming in here, make them purchase or uh, make the... Quest giver suggest that if it is a basilisk, if they know it's a basilisk, give them the ability to do to go buy the willow shade oil, which I believe does the anti petrification. I've tried to get my players to buy that stuff and they've refused over and over again and instantly regretted it against the Gorgon. Yes, things <laughs> didn't go well, but I will continue with this in a second. I like the I like the feasting room. I like the smuggler's little hole. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's You can add things after the fact. When you're making a map like this, using whatever map generator, don't worry about the details. Worry about the reusability. That little surprise right there, however. I, I like this. You can reuse the nest, make it be a different creature. You can reuse maps, even if the players know what's going on. They may not know what is where. So they may know that there's a nest over here where you use the map, but they don't know what creature it is. So, you can do what you want to. I'll go ahead and remove the panther. I'll keep that ruin statue, though. They'll say that there are some stuff over here. You can reuse this and say that there's a hermit living in the cave. And he has a nasty, he has this weird, mad habit of creating himself in statue form. And if he doesn't like it, he immediately destroys the parts he doesn't like with the chisel. As he carves it down, just gouges out the parts that he dislikes. And you can have it say that he is maddened and constantly roaming around the area. Again, one of his newest creations being this broken statue you right here and he instead of that you can cover it up and you could instead you can have another creature live here you can have him live with the funguses which by the way i might as well go ahead and do fungus there they go there's quite a good few ones in here i like the giant fungus you can have them do the fungus traps which i believe you can use it's in the out of the abyss campaign let me find it. There's the drow. Fungus, 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 fungus. Fi There's elementals. E, F. Add to cap. Flame skull. It'll be the end of the fungi. There we go. You can do gas spores. You can do... I've got the monster manual book, by the way. It helps. Uh, the gas spores. You can have the eye tyrants. You can have the death bust. You can have the beholder's memories. 
beholder's memory is a gas boar that sprouts from a beholder's corpse sometimes carries within its memories of a deceased parent. Imagine if this was a beholder lair. Yes. <laughs> Going again with that. Ah, yes, am I? When the gas spores explode, the deadly spores cast those memories adrift. Any creature that inhales the spores and survives inherits one or more of the beholder's fragmented memories. It could be ancient. It could be relatively new. It could be the key importance to a quest or a investigation that the party is on. Uh, it might gain useful information to the holder's former lair and other nearby places and creatures of interest. As I said, that is a nice key point to use in the world. In the Out of the Abyss book, which I don't recommend for New Times Game Masters, I don't recommend doing very often, period, for any kind of Game Master, having to manage about 12 NPCs at the beginning that can potentially stay with the party if they do it right. Oh my god. All right, so let's do, yes, let's do, let's do, let's do a little scary giant fungus. Uh, first thing they're going to see is line of sight being, they'll see like the small patch over here. Let's have a, a large fungus right there, almost like a trap. Let's turn on that auto rotation, get a little bit on random. Uh, fungus there, and yeah, let's keep one there. All right, then go back. Maybe another type of fungus. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Keep the uh, keep the larges going. Keep the larges popping every now and then. Don't want too many of them. Don't want too many of them. Fungus again. Gotta be fun. Let's see. Fungus small. Let's let's, let's go with these little guys. Let's have a, uh, a nest of them. Yes, they're just uh, proliferating over here. As a, a colony of spores, so to say. Now that could be a shrieker type, a gas spore type, or the violet type. A violet fungus. The purplest mushroom uses root-like feelers growing from its base to creep across the cavern floors. The four stalks protruding from a violet fungus central mass are used to lash out at prey, rotting flesh with the slightest touch. Any creature killed by a violet fungus decomposes very rapidly. A new violet fungus sprouts from the moldering corpse, growing to full size in 2d6 days. So you can use that to, again, mess with your party. Has a false appearance. All of these have false appearance. Uh, except for gas spores. Uh, false appearance, while the mushroom remains motionless, it is dis indistinguishable from ordinary fungus. So you can have the big ones be a shrieker or a violet fungus. A shrieker being one that shrieks uh, when a bright light or creature within 30 feet of the shrieker. It emits a shriek audible within 300 feet, which will carry, and if you have it inside of an enclosed compartment, you can have him do some damage. It'll be... Thunder damage, it should be. Yeah. The Shrieker continues to shriek until the disturbance moves out of its range for 1d4 to the Shrieker's turn afterwards. So if they go into this room, which is a kind of a trap, sneak it into here, go left or right. They go down here, maybe find nothing. Go right here, they see straight into a mushroom area. And if they go here, a Shrieker pops, it will immediately alert whatever's in the other room. Or any of the other rooms, as well as potentially doing some damage. You can homebrew that as much as you want. Gas spores have an eerie resemblance. The one that can... Yeah, the gas spores resembles a beholder. A creature can see the gas spore can start its true nature with intelligence check. So be careful with the uh, behold. Like, all of them look like that, I believe. Yes, they do. They even have the eye in the middle. So you gotta be careful with that. But let's, let's go with more fungus. More fungus. More, 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 more. Uh, another protruding patch, maybe? Let's get some, uh, get another little patch over here. Maybe have these be edible? Maybe not. Have, uh, these be some white cap mushrooms? Yes, considering they are white. You can have the 
red ones. You can find some nice little red ones. Ah, we can make these small. You can have these be red caps. And according to the Herbalist little homebrew guide, I believe I can share that as well. Somebody asked. I will put... Maybe. Uh, I'll need somebody to... I, I don't know if it'll be interesting or not. But yeah, I'll go ahead and put the link to the herbalism thing in the description. Why not? And you can use these as red cap mushrooms, if you wish. Or you can have these be something else. Uh, make it a valuable... Basically, you get one of the red caps, or they can be red cap goblins. <laughs> that would be scary. Pop it out of nowhere. Uh, red cap mushrooms are used in... A healing potion. All healing potions require the healing properties of the red cap. Or you can say any of these. It's your world. Do what you want to. You want to make it traditional? You want to make it not traditional? Do what you want to. But that's not bad. Spreading out mushrooms. Uh, maybe, maybe we need a, maybe we need a little bit of a misdirection. Give it a, uh, give it a little bit more. Bit of a corner. Hmm. I, I, I enjoy closed off spaces. Uh, keep in mind this entire area is usually dark. You can have uh, people like a wizard will have light cantrips. A lot of classes have light artificers, have light. Druids have their own way of doing it. If you get a, keep in mind, if you have a uh, cloud, if you have a spore druid, they can have some fun with these mushrooms because that's their entire gig. Let's see here. Now, this doesn't look too bad. Uh, maybe? Nah. They'll have their own light, because it would be difficult to maintain the light. It would be difficult to maintain. I do want to do this, though. Do that. So that way they can have a definite crevasse, again, that they can cry through. One of those things that you, like, it's just enough for one person at a time. You could immediately start that with a basilisk attack. One person goes in and immediately a basilisk is right here on top of them. They're not able to look over here. So, let's see. What else can we do? Let's take our time. No, no, no. Let's go through the entire thing. Furniture. No. Miscellaneous. Ooh. Uh, we can have piles of stone. That's not a bad idea. Randomly protruding rock that you can have a creature rotate hiding behind fits quite well with that hold on gives it a nice light vibe yes they could have a creature hiding behind that rock that's protruding again keep in mind minimalistic approach this is basic bones going for a basilisk because of the stones and stuff like that. You can uh, have it be a rust monster. Where, like a rust monster lair. And I have made a rust monster soldier unit before. I've made rust monster queen before. Massive thing. And uh, it, what it does is that it smells the iron as they come down. It'll attack the caravan. And it will turn any kind of... It'll just turn stone to rust. And all that stuff. And you can say that this is just the loot and the spare. You can have this be anything. You could just have this be like a rogue. Again, like I said earlier, rogue person being weird. But again, majority about you could close that entire thing off if you wish. We can make it whatever you want. You could drag it in there. I oh, mean, I'm going to keep that in there and I'll save it. But you can do as you will. Do as you will. I mean, I'm pretty sure you all are intelligent. You guys are smarter than I am when it comes to creativity. So, let's let's get a little bit more in this lair. I, I do want a little bit more. Miscellaneous structures. Ooh, vegetation. No. No, it's deep underground. Space. Black and white. Arches. Awnings. Ah! They're bags. Not a bad idea. Uh, considering it was a Adventuring party, you can say an adventuring party came through here, hence that. The uh, rust or blood or whatever you want to call that. You can say on the uh, neck to the body of this large statue, it could be a uh, person that was enchanted by enlarge, reduce. This made him a larger form. But next to the body, you can have it kind of hidden against the wall. 
A backpack. Yes. Yes, indeed. So, that works. Keep in mind, like, people have to zoom in and say, Hey, what's that? Oh, it's a, it's a backpack. Or you can give it to them easily. You can do as you will do with it. That's not a bad idea. You can do pouches. You can do sacks. Ah, speaking of which, they can do a little pouch trap as well right here. A little, a little detail. A little pouch to it. A little bit pixelated. But people will understand that there's something in the barrel, will they not? It, that little flare is pretty good. The smugglers are like, oh, they're not going to find anything here. But it is what it is. Barrels. Ooh. Uh, some broken barrels. Old ale caskets. I think I like the broken barrel. Uh, yeah, let's have a... Uh, let's go ahead and start populating the external. Either way, majority of this is going to be a path through the mountain. Could be a dwarven underdark path. Could be a new path that was discovered recently. Could be a many things. Uh, let's have a broken barrel right there. Give him a nice little peekaboo. Have uh, a creature hiding inside of it. It would have to be medium or smaller, which a basilisk could fit because it's medium. You probably need to make it a baby basilisk. Uh, this feels a little bit barren. So does this. Let's see. It likes stuff. Barrels and kegs. Smashed barrels. Again, not a bad idea. Barrels of water. That's, that's pretty fresh. I like that. That's pretty fresh. Give them a little bit of a hint of where things will be. Uh, you can say, you could have a cart manually put a cart right here and say there's been a recent attack recent again capture being eaten alive kind of situation there uh have a barrel going about right there give them something to see and say hey there's something here it looks like a barrel oh, it's still relatively new not come to age or the mold and mildew that has infested this cave but Looks almost as if it has fallen off a wagon due to the wagon escaping rapidly or due to some type of conflict in the area has been thrown from and has since fallen and collapsed, being destroyed in the process. So that's not a bad idea. Have that going. I'm, I'm reserved. No, that's not too bad. We're not doing interior, so we don't need that. Ooh, do we want any more blood? A scorch mark? Probably not. Broken glass. There's some cracks we can do. Claw marks. Yes. They do have big, meaty claws. So. They can have fun with that, can't they? Let's see. How big is this boy? The holder. I gotta go back to the page. Ah, professionalism at work. Lights. It's pre-beholder, isn't it? Yeah, it's just pre-beholder. My gosh, I'm all over the place. Uh, it does have claws, and it is powerful enough. So maybe, maybe in the dark, some claw marks. Yeah. Some small claw marks to denote combat in the area. Yeah, there we go. Little bit of, a little bit of a touch. Let's see. Floor cracked. Ah, no. These would work better. They do have... Eh, they have four. We could have some three scratches. Uh, that'd be fine. Give a little bit of a... Yes. Give it a little bit of a uh, turnaround. You can prioritize and put what you want to. I do like these better. So, I will use them. I will have it be... Again, it needs to be off to the side. So it looks like they attacked, tried to turn, and go back into its hole. That's how you got the report in the first place for your adventuring party. Works out pretty well. Anything else we'd like in here? No boats. Uh, ugly bed. What? <laughs> I'm finding new things all the time. Rust. Yeah, there'd be rust. Maybe you do the uh, painting, stuff like that. Uh, books, scrolls, you could put some books and stuff into the, uh, if you want to give them extra loot. Bottles, uh, a thing of wine. Wouldn't be a bad idea if you make them have wine. Yeah, I'll do that over here. 
just a bottle of wine. Nah, if there are battles, if there are top down version, it's an empty bottle. Hmm. That may be better. Give it a, and with an empty bottle, it, it may not actually be empty. It may be a uh, potion of air. <laughs> like she just had be a big bag of air for a little bit. <laughs> vodka. Yeah, we're talking about vodka all day. Boxes, crates, containers. If there's, if it's the fallen adventurer party, as I stated earlier, going in there, you could have more remains, if you wish. There's a gargoyle statue. That's more like a bird. Bridges, no. Burial, no. Bushes, cacti. Hmm. We had roots. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Get some roots in here. Make it realize that it's a like dug out, not a carved pace. Let's look. Root. Tree uprooted. Cookies. <laughs> so that's a now. <laughs> oh well. Cages. Oh, now that's not a bad idea. Maybe somebody tried to, uh, part of the smuggler's den situation. They tried to capture the beast. And it managed, to, or they were smuggling the beast. And something got loose. Broken free from its cage. Now, within the area. That would make sense with the lore with the eggs being prized. They left it alone for too long and it broke free. I like that. Let's give it a random rotation. Yeah, about right here. Cage has been completely busted open. So the original story could be that it's been an old place. Some smugglers have gotten into, found a little crevasse that they can put their wares into. Uh, unfortunately, you can add a statue in here making sure the smugglers were the first victims. Uh, unfortunately, the basculus escaped. Carved its own little pathways out. Uh, the mushroom cave probably being naturally born. Maybe some inborn light. Like in, like some light trickling down through the roots that reach off to the top. Some nearby entrance. Water dripping down through the side. You know, aesthetics. But that's that works out pretty well. Again, you, you just go through the items. That's the reason why I like the Elwinter thing. There's a lot of mods, a lot of items. I say mod, the uh, workshop items. It's got a lot of things you can do for Maybe I should go for this. That wouldn't be a bad idea. That may be a better cage. Hmm. That would just be a top-down cage. But I expect them... Let's look through them all. Let's go through... Let's just type in cage. Nicholas Cage, huh? Cage. There's not a ton of options. I want cage broken. So... Uh, let's assume that they're probably idiots. Which is not too far to st assume and stretch. Uh, keep it in the middle there? Ah, yeah, there we go. That'd be fine. They can, uh, people can go around it and do that. Uh, now, keep it to the side. I need to keep it to the side. Uh, random rotation. I guess that'd be fine. They do need to see that it exists, however. The remains of what seems to be a cage in the corner of the room. The cage is now rusted. But you notice, for even though the cage is mostly mangled and, and rusted beyond almost recognition, it has claws and teeth marks. The bars bent unnaturally so. And with an investigation check, probably about 14 or 12, you notice that it would be broken from the inside out. You know. All that stuff that you can do. There's a lot of information you can do. A lot of things. Like, don't don't take my word on it. Take, do what you want to do with it. You can have that be like a recent bust out. There's a creature in here eating the smuggler or doing whatever you want to do with it. Again, you guys have fun with it. I'll be doing these videos, if you care to. I'll be trying to do these videos several times a week. I um, haven't decided exactly on our schedule yet. Maybe once a day is the plan. I mean, this isn't difficult. Maybe three times a week. I mean, I'm not entirely sure. But I do have... I do stream... Stream Battletech. Every day. But... I, I'm just doing this on the other side. Give me something to go on YouTube. <laughs> Again. Raw. I'm being honest. Let's get into it. Cages. Prison. Get a guillotine in there. Oh no. Carpets and hides. If there's a rolled carpet... 
That wouldn't be a bad idea. Pelt rack. No, rolled rug. Nah, no, 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 no. There's no reason for that. Because it has the barrel. The barrel denotes. The barrel is the head. The barrel will be the head. That's fine. Ah, here's the carts and wagons. So, again, uh, you can add as you need to. You can have the wagon still being there. Uh, you can have the cart being still on the side. Uh, there should be a destroyed cart. Funeral cart. Wagons. Uh, here it is. Overturned wagon. I remember having that one available. Let's see. Is there another one? Track cart, wagon, wagon, wagon. War cart. Ooh. Wheelbarrow. A wheel. I guess the only thing would be the overturned. Uh, hmm. A little bit unsized. Could I have it be right here? Or further down off to the side? I like this. I like this. So it's right here. You notice that one of the barrels collapsed and broken in on itself. Uh, it would need to be a little bit larger. Yeah, there we go. That would prevent travel to and fro. So, again, for my personal use, which is what I'm doing, I like this. If you guys want a, if somebody asks for a modified version, I don't think I'd mind too much. It wouldn't take very long to, like, delete the wagon if you don't want the wagon. I mean, again, if you want something, comment below. Uh, again, new YouTube stuff, so I'm not expecting many people to watch this. But if somebody wants something, please let me know. I'll put it up on drives or upload it somewhere. I'll have to look it up. But uh, this works. Would I use it, though? Would I use a wagon? No, I would make, I'm very mean to my characters, so what I would do is, is that I'd have the barrel, and that'd be it. So, I don't think I'll use it, so that way it could be used over and over again. I probably would delete the statues, or I'd create a version without the statues, and just have that be a separate little encounter area. But, that works. Alright, I think I'm more or less done, however chests, lockboxes. I mean, there's already a little secret goodie room, and if you're here for a mission, then you're already going to get paid after the fact. If you're here by random circumstance, you can uh, have the basilisk uh, from the people that it's killed. You can say that their uh, clothes and bodies on these statues down here still have their corn pou uh, coin pouches on them that have not turned to stone. So what you can do is, is that you can have them with some finagling. If they don't care about the bodies or if the bodies are already missing head pieces and stuff like that. If the basculus is especially hungry with the head. There's the result. There's the how you fixed the uh, chest puzzle little thing. But you can have that be their reward on top of the fact if it's a random encounter. You can have them get the reward separate from the fight. Or you can have them fight in the thing. Now, would there be any, like, rare gems or anything in there? No, I've already got the smuggler hold, crafting, crates, crystals. Yeah, that's, I've done that to people. Pillows, dead bodies. That's not something you want to hear. People, burial ground, bear. There's the barbarian. No, there's not going to be any skeletons, severed hands. Uh, I like to do the, uh, burn ones, I believe? Or the, uh, where is it? There's one that I usually do that works out pretty good. There's that mass. There's the dragon skeleton. Oh, that's pretty cool. Charred. Yeah, charred. You can use charred as a double for statue that's been knocked down. Because it looks porous. It looks like it's kind of turned to stone. You can look in the top left. It doesn't look that bad. I may... That would be better because they wouldn't keep them standing up. I think I will replace that. So what I'll do is, is scale this down. Yeah, look at that. That's actually a lot better. I'll go ahead and scale that down. Delete these little boys, even though it looks pretty good. Uh, and have the random rotations near the bodies. I need you as well. Same size. And random rotation. And then I'll go to you. 
Uh, yeah, short, sweet, simple. If you're here to rescue somebody, you can turn somebody into it. You can do that. You're here to rescue multiple people. Uh, you can do as you will with it. Uh, yeah. And then delete. And delete. So if you're here to rescue multiple people, you can use that as you need to. That works better because at that, what you can do with that is uh, now instead of their guarantee being statues, we can make this a corpse area or uh, like the like the feeding ground again, as I was stating for the other thing. So I think we're pretty good. I want to go ahead and go through all of it. I'm glad I found that coins. No. Desk. No doors. Now, do we want a door to the smuggler? Probably. They wouldn't just leave it open. And they would have it behind lock and key. But then it'd be broken down. There, nah. Yeah, okay, it'd be broken down like that. That's not a bad idea. Be broken. It would need to be a... Uh, need to be a fairly large door. Mm. Fairly sturdy door. Looks like it's been broken down from one side. Yeah, there we go. So it, that's definitely more than five feet tall. Just, uh, I want to say, probably about seven foot tall door, about a five foot wide door. You can see the claws on it. You can see it definitely been broken. You can barely see the claw marks on it. But you can definitely see it's been broken down from the inside out because it's the top down on that side. Yeah, that works. Let's see if there's a better door because there's always a better door, a better option. Uh, we could just go top down if we really wanted to. Leave the door open. Now, nah, let's have it break out. That's not a bad idea. Target dummies, fits post, fire. Yes, have everything on fire. They can't breathe. Flares. Nope. I think we're good. I think I'm going to actually end it there. That looks fairly good. You can add little goodies here and there. Uh, this could just be... Again, you can have this be like uh, petrified remains. You can have this be uh, collapsed. You can have this be a statue with a secret compartment. That uh, has decayed over time. That's not a bad idea. Uh, and what has happened is. Is that a satchel or something. A bag has come out. Because it decayed when somebody touched it. Then it just fell apart. There's a bag there. That's a little bit of a secret loot. It can, it can be a bunch of things. But yeah. Now it's definitely multi-use. Uh, either way. I think I will probably pop that. That's, that. that's not repeatable. I do like the surprise. You can you can put your own little surprise here around the corner. You can have one of the beasties be around the corner. And uh, they just fight that for one little bit. The other one's just waiting behind the rocks. Maybe actually put them right here and put it right there. If they come around that corner, then they'll come from behind. If they come around here, they'll come from behind. Or they go over there. So this would definitely be a nice little place to hide one. Back here, maybe you can hide one. Here, all these little knickknacks and corners. Great place to do hide and ambushing. Which the Basilisk excels at. Again, keep in mind, you can adapt it as you need to. You're a game master. You know what to do. Uh, it, for damage, does poison damage. So keep in mind, if it does bite you, you want to, if you level it up, scale the poison damage slightly. Poison damage hurts. It can really hurt. But don't go too heavy with it. But... Uh, that's all I've got for right now. Uh, thank you for staying here with me. Uh, my accent has changed because I've gotten nervous, I guess. But I appreciate if you stay through the entire video. And if you want more, please follow, subscribe, uh, help support me do what I do. And yeah, I'll make more of these. Just comment below if you want to see something specific. I'll probably go something simple. I'll probably show off my Cobalt Cave. One that I've made a while back next time, if I get around to it. But, again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Later, everybody.